nice to meet you, sir. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Yeah, thank you, Denny. Uh, see, let's let's start. Let's start. Tell my audience who you are and what you do. Okay. My name is Dano Bon. However, my birth name is Oluwafiron Dano Ogumbono. Okay. And I am the founder of Goloko Diaries and Dano's Cycle Limited that operates in, in a community format as Dano's Money Cycle. Okay. Goloko Diaries is a media and publishing company, whereas Dennis Money Cycle is a financial organization. Yeah, then we'll get to we'll get to those. See what I want right now. I want my audience to know who Denu is. Okay. okay. So let's let's so, focus on you. Okay. okay so that my, my my audience will know who you are. See, you, like you told me, you just told me today, you are a recent graduate. So that's inter exactly. that, that's interesting. So tell my tell my audience that. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful. So I had a background in architecture. I, I graduated last year, January, January 2022. And currently I'm actually serving the nation, the National Youth Service Corps. And I'm working with the state, with the Lagos State Ministry of Works and Infrastructure in the Architecture Department. And today, today, 28th of July was my community, General Community Development Service. I am under the special CDS that um, and we do financial inclusion uh, under financial inclusion as a person um i'm just one that is on a journey i'm on a journey and then i'm practically taking others along with me okay. that's like so me i'm the first born of four i have three sisters my dad and mom they're doing fine they're both yoruba from Ogun okay. state then I'm currently in Lagos, definitely, because yeah, I'm currently in Lagos and yeah. Practically that's so, what so, so tell me, what school did you go to? I went to Labis on Banjo University. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So so how how come I mean you you have two companies uh you had? Uh tell us tell us a little bit about those companies, but I, I also want to know. How come at your young age, you are on this journey? Okay. So everything, like, everything started with an existential crisis that happened when I was in 300 level in architecture. Actually, we call it architecture because it was more like a torture. <laughs> <laughs> That's just on a light note. But really, it was a hard drill on us. However, I chose architecture. I wanted to do architecture, right? And when I got in, I was really, I was just going after first class. I eventually graduated with the second class over, by the way. So okay. I'm still like Congrats. a good, bright student. Thank you so much for that. And um, in my 300 levels, I had an existential crisis that had me thinking because I kind of found out that I could, I had this zeal for writing since I was eight years old. That was as far as I could remember, because at eight years old, practically, one of the keynotes for me was that I walked up to my mom with about two written manuscripts in my hand, and I was like, mom, I want to become a published author. And she was like, she was going to introduce me to a friend of us that studied English when she was in school, that currently worked with a publishing firm. And uh, well, about that particular matter, probably we'll be having a discussion maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just like a joke but i know the person by the way i know the person like personally too but we necessarily did not push to have the discussion and then later i got to understand that it is as a result of the cost that comes with publishing a book mm. and as a then my parents didn't have the financial capital to fund that particular dream of mine so i asked like I just, it was just like a dream that was occurring every single year when I was nine, or I would publish my book this year when I was 10, 11, 12, 13. At 18, I found out about Amazon publishing. And that was when it started. That was when, it was also when I was 18, 17, 18, and 19, 20. Practically those years, from 17, late 17 into 20, was when I was in existential crisis and I was just like having all of these things going on in my head, trying to find my path, trying to understand the purpose of myself and God. So, however, 
when I was 18, when I clocked 18, going into 18, it was really, really strong. It really affected my academics. In my 300 level, that was the first time I was having a D in my academics. And I had it in a major course. Architecture, we always do design presentations every single semester. So I yeah. had it in that course. So it really sapped my GPA. I went from a four points to practically under four, like about 3.98 and continued like until I was back in, I think, 500 level before it went, started going back up again. And it didn't really do any much. Just yeah. stayed at 3.78 because I mean the cumulative. Yeah. So I had that D and then when I was realizing that I was going to have that particular D in that particular course, because this particular course is something that if you failed it, it was an extra A. So as I was preparing to get my results, I was already thinking I was going to fail. So I had cried. I cried practically after my jury. I cried overnight. I cried overnight. My sister was comforting me. My friends were comforting me. I had cried overnight. So eventually when I saw the result and I saw it was a D, it was not that I, I didn't have the strength to cry again. So I was just like laughing. <laughs> you get. But I but I already like was launched into a phase of my life where it was as if my academics were challenged and they were challenged to like, I don't think I'm going to do this thing with my life. I don't think I'll be doing this in my life. So, and then I, I was not, as a then, I'd already written, I'd already published a book on Amazon and then I was working on another book. So it was like, I think I'll be going into writing more and the likes of it. Then I watched, I started seeing some movies. Also, as at that time, I was having, it was an all-round existential crisis because I was also dealing with my faith, the faith I was brought up to believe in. So I was having those questions. And as at that time, I was, I was now going out of my denominational, um, my denominational restriction mm. into other cycles. And I was seeing the reality of life from not just the perspective and the lenses of the people that raised me. Mm. So it was just a lot for me because I was a teenager in 400 level, 300 level, 400 level. And I was trying to like figure all of these things out in my head. And um, eventually I saw some movies, you know, that encouraged me. I was into poetry. I was writing dark poems. I was writing a lot of poems that were also like stoic, um, you know, trying to get myself, they were really, really deep. And it was about that time too that I, maybe I was, because I'll do a little of God today, then I'll draw back. It was about that time also that I got myself the name Dane Vaughan. Like I prayed and then I, I out of that prayer, like encounter, I was just like, okay. I think I saw a seed on him somewhere and then I just decided that, okay, instead of Oluwa Fenromi, Dane Favor, Gumbono, that is my birth name. Let me just have Dane from Oluwa Fenromi, Dane Vo from Favor, then Ogumbono, born from that so interesting and, uh, <laughs> I started using it. so now i'm trying to like establish how goloko Diaries came about so eventually all along through this process i eventually got to the point where i now saw this movie this uh, um and th that is why to 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 date i still want to like learn spanish i want to learn spanish then yeah spanish expanol like um you know i even wrote poems that you know poco a loco me vlevo un poco mas loco little by little Every day I go a little more crazy, you know. Interesting. Exactly. So I I, I saw this movie. Coco is an Academy Award movie. It's an anima is an animatic, and it practically was talking about a guy that was raised up to believe music and uh, music was like a a taboo in their family. And his name was Miguel, and you know he wanted to do music. That was what he wanted to do. So and then. The whole story went round and round, and then the, the grandmother was Coco, and eventually it was it happened that his grandfather, his great grandfather, was actually a musician. Okay. Exactly. So the, the it just went round and round, and actually, the the I got so I I felt myself in that movie, and for one reason, I just feel like Poco a loco and Poco Poco a Poco that is little by little. Then also, loco, just be loco, like just go crazy. <laughs> like break out of the norms that you were maybe born with without necessarily doing things that are wrong. Okay. That kind of a thing. So yeah. that is where the word local in the go local came from. Mm. And it means go crazy. Mm. Go crazy. You have a dream, an idea you believe in. 
it is not going to kill anybody. Go crazy. And crazy there doesn't mean you should be mad or gone mad. It practically means you should step out, step out of the box and let them tell you that, guy, what is running through your head? <laughs> but you know what you're doing. So, and then diaries has been a thing that I wanted, I'd always wanted to have a diary. And along the line, I eventually got myself one. And so, um, and then I wrote the book I actually published in 2018, 20, sorry, 2019 then, was a book that talked about how to write, um, how to keep a diary. Yeah. And so... It's, it's, on, I, it's, on, it's on Amazon, yeah? Yeah, it's on Amazon, yeah. Okay. Diary 101, Diary 101. Okay. Diary 101. It was a being on the earth's surface too. That is like the full title, Diary 101 by Dane Vorbon. You will see it on Amazon. Okay. So, I, I, I now put out this, I, I, I was able to understand that the word diary actually means I'm taking, I, I'm like, I'm doing something every day. It could be a verb. Yeah. That is, I'm doing something every single day. I'm writing, I'm, I'm writing some, docu, I'm, I'm writing details of every single day. Yeah. So I was not like, go crazy every single day, practically beautiful, go local diaries. So, Interesting. Um, and the the initial reason I started it, number one, to solve the issue of a lot of people wanted to want to get published, but they cannot get published, you know. Uh, and that is why we have a little book publishing thing going on in Go Local Diaries. So practically, but the main idea is that I wanted people to feel that whatever dream I have, I can get it from a point A to a point B, you know, stepping out of stepping out of the norm. And that is why in Go Local Diaries, our vision is taking your success on a journey. Like instead of waiting, you know, waiting for the laws that people have set, that society has set to work on you, you just step out yourself and take that success like you grab hold of success it's not more a destination it's something you seize hold of and then you are taking it on a journey yourself interesting so and that is like the crazy part of it so and to do this to get this done i i understand that there's a, the part of mentorship there's a part of some people that have done it because we have families as we have witnesses in this world people executives you know industry leaders um politicians Massive people, thought leaders that have just like done crazy things out of this world that people look up to, that and across all sectors actually, yeah. and we actually could learn from what they did because and it's not necessarily like not not just because we needed a blueprint, but we just wanted to um get a a scope, a perspective of their experience so that we can be able to relate to it. For example, someone succeeded in the politics um sorry in the in the in the industry of um, economics of comp uh, country economics and i as a person that is interested in leadership of the nation this person has maybe like nelson and, and mandela now and then i'm now having nelson having to have written a book about the crazy way his life went so this time around when i'm reading because i'm very very interested in that subject and this is i was like the best way to be able to take your own personal sources on a journey is by reading books that books of people instead of waiting on them to come and sit down and mentor you reading books of people that have done this crazy stuff like the one you want to achieve yeah so and that is why we have a little book publishing thing going on in go local diaries but the main aim is to be able to get like anyone that has a dream a high deal that they feel like that is so passionate about to get them eating the ground and running with it while leaning on relevant experiences from people that have trailblazers that have done it ahead of them, like witnesses, you get. So that was what led me to bringing Go Local Diaries together. And then we started the company January. That was the vision, that's the vision. We started with book publishing, however, and that uh, I don't necessarily like to introduce Go Local Diaries as a book publishing in, um, firm um, because it doesn't connote the general idea. That's why I like to say we're a media and publishing firm. Okay. So that is Go Local Diaries. Then I started Go Local, like, that is, and that's like more like the main thing I wanted to do all my life. However, however, as I was going on, you know, a lot of things, you know, I, I said I was in existential crisis when I was 18, 19, 20, 20 time, also that COVID-19 period. 
you know, at that, those times, I was really reading books that I was building on myself with um, a lot of residual knowledge. I built a lot of residual knowledge. So around January or so, I just happened to realize that my sister, my immediate sister, had about 50,000 era in her savings. And myself, that was a brother that, you know, she most of the time, like she uses my hotspot. She asked me to have my brother, let me do data. You know, I don't actually have any reserve. <laughs> <laughs> so everything I'm doing is from the 5,000 euro that is either left in my account or even maybe like the 1,000 euro that I have left on me so I was like wait oh. and so like from that not like I didn't know what to do about my personal finance yeah but like the trigger was not there so that was the trigger and then I was already vibrant on LinkedIn then I was I think I was close to 10,000 followers as a day mm. That's at February this thing. So I just went on, I think February 21, 2022, if I'm not mistaken. I just made a post that, okay, well, I just realized that my sister, that was how I wrote it. It was a poll. I just realized that my sister has so, so money in her bank account, blah, blah, blah. And then me, I didn't have it. And she will be asking me for data this and the, and the point is, I want to take my sources on a journey. I want to take my finances on a journey. I want to start like being intentional with my personal finance. Who is willing to join me on this journey? If you vote on this poll that you are, if you say yes, you want to, I'm going to reach out to you. That was how the poll ended. And 120 people voted on the poll. 100 people said yes. And I messaged the 100 people and we started the community and we started saving. But there was a lot of residual knowledge going on. Yeah. I already understood that, okay, 10, 10, 10, 70, um, 10, 10, 80, 10% for tithes, 10% for investment. They call it pay yourself, you know, from books, the richest man in Babylon, psychology yep. of money, it's mm -hmm. in time. So like, so we said we now wanted to, we, we formed the organization, just like a WhatsApp group, and then we were just there. There was no name initially. It is on that, when everybody about, um, the first people that joined were like, yes, about 100 people joined. It was later we cut down to 55. And currently, we like we, we are like about 98. But currently, we are also like still cutting down because we really need people that are intentional. We are still cutting down again. So when people joined, it was then we now like started deliberating that, okay, what should we call this group? Some said, oh, investment cycle. Some said maybe inner cycle. Someone's a lot of names. Then all of a sudden, I just feel like, okay, how about Denus Money Cycle? What do you guys think about that? Yeah, then, you, start, you, know, you started it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Where, where, where that was like the thing. I, so someone was like saying, oh, Denus Money Cycle is just making it like more about me or something. Um, that um, they say they feel like maybe, um, maybe say they, they, I think the name was Investment Money Cycle that was recommended. Like that was like the main recommendation to counter. Denis Money Cycle. I was like, wait, okay, let's let's beat it. Let's beat this. All of you came to this group because of who? Denu. Denu. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And if we are, if this is a personal financial cycle, and if practically like any other thing that is adding to whatever it is is money cycle. So if it is going to be anything money cycle, all of you came here as a result of Denu. So it should be Denu's money cycle. So you guys are in my cycle. We are well that was how we decided to name. So when we wanted to, so I, I uh, along the line, you know, everything, you know, I just told you the story of how we got into Goloko Diaries and how we yes. got into yes. money cycle. But I didn't actually emphasize on the way the relationships also worked. Mm. Relationships worked, and then one way or the other, Goloko Diaries, you know, from one event. Then to another event, I was able to meet with people that eventually became like part of my founding team for Goloko Diaries. Then for DMC, it was the community from the community. It, it started from the community. Yeah. And then from the conversations we were having, there was a guy that just like took the matter on his head and it was looking at him, bro, this is me that called people here for <laughs> Why are you taking this thing on your head more than me? Yeah. On yourself. You know, that was how I was thinking in my head. But eventually, his name is Integrity Waboko, and he's now the president and CEO of, um, of DMC, Demons Money Cycle. And we started talking, and we realized that this thing can be more than just an accountability community. It can be something that can grow more than that. They, they do. It can be a financial organization. Okay. Then let me ask you one thing. 
How old are you? I will be 22 by August 8th. Okay. What I want to tell you, you, the way you do things are beyond your, yeah. your, your, your years. Yeah. See, that simple thing to allow the young man who showed a lot of enthusiasm to allow him to take the lead even though you were, everybody was there because of you. That single act to allow someone who you see is enthusiastic to take the lead is not normal with everyday people. And I will tell you, this is why you Will be, will, will be a success. And this is why a lot of people don't succeed. Because when, you, when, you, when they start something and they bring people into, into it, they don't sit, sit down to evaluate who is best to lead this group. You are, you are, going, to be, you are going to be 22 and you have already gotten that into your head. Wow. wow. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know about that. I was just, you know, it was just coming naturally. See, see, it, it, it shows me you were trained by people who have certain values. See, uh, now I don't know what the, the issues you, you had with religion and all that, okay? But I will tell you this, okay? I was, I was once in that space, okay? Today, I'm not religious, but I hold all the values I learned from religion, all of them. I'm not religious, I don't go to church, but I, I would never tell anyone who goes to church not to go to church. Yeah, that's me. You see, if I see people who are attacking people who go to church, I would tell them, no, don't do that. Don't attack people who are religious, no. You might tell them, Hey, I don't think, I think this is this, that well, you tell them, but religion or no religion doesn't matter. In fact, the, the values are the things that are, that are most important. And I, I got a lot of value from going to church, you know? So uh, even though you had your crisis, I don't know how you settle that, but you have uh, certain values that are uncommon, okay? And those values can only come from parents and your community. So they did a good job. Thank you very much. Yeah, they actually did a good job. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. I, I yeah. do appreciate that. Wow. I do appreciate that. So, so your your. Denu, uh, Denu, uh, Monique Psycho, and uh, Go Colo Diaries. Mm. Go Loco Diaries. Go, 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 go Loco Diaries. Yes, yes, yes. See, I will tell you this uh, publishing is a well, it's, it's not pu publishing first. First, we as Africans. We don't read and we don't write books. Sorry, your yeah, you're back. Okay. So I say we don't read, we don't write books. Okay. I say as a society, okay. 
uh, and uh, I really want your generation to start reading. Really, okay. And I'm I'm excited to see a young man who is uh, hungry to write. I mean, that's that's fantastic. Uh, I don't know how your parents feel after you went to university to study architecture. <laughs> and now you are back to your, your first desire, writing, right. you know. Well, well you are, you're, making, you're making something happen. You know, uh, I don't know how successful uh, this venture would be financially, but uh, I want to encourage you to grow it as a community to encourage people to write, 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 write and read, 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 you know, because until we as a society start reading, see that there's so many things in the world that all we need to do is to pick up a book. Like you said, there's so many things, a lot of things that we are struggling with, that the solution is inside the book. Hmm. Yeah. You know, but if you don't read the book, you won't get it. So I want to encourage you to take this to another, another level. Definitely, sir. We're, we're working towards that. Good. And on that on that note, see, I saw this. I know maybe you have talked about it, but I want I want you to 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 dig deeper into it. You wrote it on your uh, on your profile on your LinkedIn profile. Um, a mar 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 marathoner at life, and all I do is run. Yeah, yeah. So. So, to, to, tell my audience more about it. I've been running. And I will keep running. And it's really, it's really, it's, it, that is more like my own personal mantra and my own personalization of taking your success on a journey. Yeah. When you're running, okay. And literally, I've been running marathons. Oh, okay. I mean, I've done 10 <laughs> kilometers. I've done wow. 20 kilometers. Interesting. I think the highest I did was like a 22 kilometer. Wow. I was, in fact, I have a, I have a participant's medal for wow. running nonstop. In interesting. For the marathon that happened last year in Lagos. I Very slept, good. I slept in um, I slept in Lekki over over the sky just to run for this marathon. Wow. Yeah. So it's one of the things I'm so 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 proud of. Yeah. You should be. Yeah. So I've been literally running like that. And you know when you're running a marathon, it is different from when you're running a hundred meter race. Yeah, it's great. Yes. It's called an endurance race. Yeah. And that is the race of building anything that is meaningful in life. Amen. It is nothing. And that is why me, I don't feel success is a place. Success is something you pick. Success is every single day. The day you wake up and don't feel like it, you're moving. 
Because when you're running a marathon, even if you don't feel like it, for you to earn a medal, not even whether gold, silver, or bronze, for you to earn a medal, you must run the race and finish it. Yeah. If you will get a medal. So the race is the the race is the success. You get. Yeah. So when I say I'm a marathon at life, outside of the fact that I literally run a running, marathon. Yes. It also like means that that is how I am actually necessarily committed to every single thing I'm doing. I must see to the end of this. Amen. I like that. It started from architecture. In my 400 levels, I told you I was an existential crisis that started in 300 level. Mm. By the time I got to 400 level, it is calculated that by the time we were preparing for our first and um, first semester presentation, I was engaging a very, very strong desire to quit and take a bow. I remember Sunday, my jury was on Tuesday. Hmm. Sunday morning, early morning, I was I was not even ready to go to church. I, and I think I didn't go to church that particular Sunday. I mean, my Sundays, me, my my religious activity was really, really, I was practically disenfranchised by the COVID-19 issue. Because during that COVID-19, well, it was it started before the COVID-19 period. Since my existential crisis came into being, I've like been, I've not been really consistent with these things, services, mm. because I was trying to find answers that were different from what I was just being taught in church. Mm. You get? Yeah. So, but right now, I'm, really, I'm, I'm committed to spiritual leadership, actually, right now. Okay. And even at this moment, <laughs> the way I hold God is even tighter than I held God before I went into existential okay. crisis. Okay. So, but the point was, that particular Sunday, I was I had like loads of work. If you know architecture, we are yeah. drawing, you know, you are, you, are, you are bringing something that you have not seen. You're, material, you're, you're materializing it into reality. Yeah. And then you're also modeling it out. Yeah. Something that... So I was preparing for, and this time around, the course was a six-unit course. It was no longer four units that we used mm. to because we're now in our penultimate. Yeah. And so I was not like, okay, I was preparing. And one of the things, 400 level was crazy because I was coming with a very, very different way and approach to the way presentations have been done in my school for like the past since it was founded. Okay. My cumulative, um, my cumulative um, assessment was poor, especially on studio. In my 400 level first semester, my life was practically on the... Edge because there was no board meeting, lecturers meeting that were my my name was not mentioned. <laughs> to be very honest, like I see lecturers saying that, tell me you are not doing us proud. They come to class, they will be lecturing. They'll be like, "Are you sure you want to graduate?" My class lecturer. That was what it was like. It became when when any time we are done from lectures, my classmates will go on the stage and joke about. <laughs> how it was and please note the fact that i was a teenager yeah in my head these people are not understanding what is going on so see and i i I, also, under, I understand because I, I was a teenager most of my university days when i when i got my first degree yes <laughs> you can see what i'm saying so they were not understanding what was going on i was trying my best to be at my best so that particular sunday number one I, I started with trying to trying to bring up something that was different from what was normal. Mm. Then at the point, it was two days to my to the presentation that was going to determine whether I was going to be this thing. And in my mind, I was like, well, whatever the result of the presentation, I'm not coming back to this school because wow. I will be going to IT. Wow, you IT. want to quit. I'm quitting. In fact, everybody that were my old mate, I've told them that they should forget about seeing me <laughs> after ITO, that that IT period, I mean, I'm using it to run away. <laughs> that, that was how it was. So, well, Sunday night, Sunday midnight, 
while I, I just I just left from drawing, I left from the table and then I went to my reading table and then I opened my system and then I opened Dan Locke's book. Dan Locke is one of my model, he's on my profile, public profile. I'm proud of him. When I move to my apartment, I'm going to have a picture of him and like on the wall because he's someone that I love his dedicatedness to success, dedication to success. So like I was reading his book, a few money, a few money. Um, I think I was reading it for like maybe the third or fourth time. Mm, that's dedication. I'm telling you. Yeah, for it, for you, see, you, read, you read a book over and over and over again. Over again. That's dedication, yes. So this time around, as I was reading, for the first time, I was reading a particular part that spoke to me in a different kind of way. And I was like, wait, are you actually saying that I saw I saw a, a, a scenario. Don't rem remember before then I said I'm I'm dropping out of this thing. Yeah. So I now saw that he said, okay, someone someone created, you know, started a company out of something that was a pain to him. But he stayed through the pain and got out of the pain. Yeah. So he now created the solution. And funny enough, I think it has to do with architecture too. He now created the solution for people who are going through that pain for them to be able to scale. And then he now has like a multi-million dollar company. I was like, nice. Let me see the end of this. That was like the initial, that was the major turnaround. But I'll tell you that the intentionality didn't come from that place. But the trigger was that, that book I read. And I was like, okay. I stood up from that book and I went back to my drawing board and I said, I was going to do this. I was going to see the end of the day. In short, I can't, by when it was Tuesday, I had only seven drawing presentation papers to present. On the norm, my, my colleagues, the list of them was having, the least reasonable of them, average, was having like 25 pieces. Wow. I had seven. Though they were bigger sheets. But I mean, let's talk with numbers. So like, if, if, if it would be analytical, I was on the losing side. Yeah, it, lo it, looks, it a, looks that way. And I was bringing a presentation style that was really, really different. Probably they've not even seen. It is something that is in, they use in other climbs of presentation. That is why I'm actually bringing it. But nobody had dared to do it in my set. So I presented. And would you believe that both lecturers that drew with me graded me A? However, as a result of my cumulative, I was averaged back to a B. Don't worry. <laughs> but you know what, what, what got me? What, like, I also like, wow. And that's like one of the foundations of I'm going to see through this. Yeah. And I've made a post about it. That is the marathon mindset. We are not going into the game to win the game for gold. No, we are going to finish. And if yeah. we finish with a B, it is better than not finishing. And that is what I say I'm a marathoner at life. And all I do is run. So if I say I have a project, and even in the dime minute of the project, dime minute of the project, and I, I'm like, Bro, this realistically, let's talk about this thing. This thing is not turning out the way we want it to be. Mm. I must just see to the end of it before I drop my pen and say, okay, at least we got a B. The, then, uh, again, you have a lot of things to, to bring to your mates. Okay. Yes, I know your, the circumstances that you have gone through. Me, most people around your age who have gone to school have also gone through it. But uh, what I see about you is that you think you think through things and. Uh, you have uh, gathered mentors around you through books, okay, that have 
Guyana Dew. Okay, and uh, you have also done something special. You have created something out of the solution. You know, and you're doing something at your age. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I'm I'm proud of you. I'm see, I'm proud to know you. I, I really appreciate that, sir. I do appreciate that. No, I do I'm appreciate very that. proud to know you, you know. So see, maybe you, you don't know a lot of about Africa. Okay, so let's focus this 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 uh question about nigeria which you know okay yes sir so, yeah so for 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 you what just give us three big challenges you you think we have in uh, nigeria for example and i i will tell you because of the of the large population of Nigeria. So whatever challenges you, 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 you see, it might also affect other uh, countries in Africa. So what are the big, three big challenges you see uh, that, will, that we, need to, we need to fix, you know? Well, I, I'm necessarily not prepared for the question, but I think I have some things to say. Okay. Especially about Nigeria. Okay. Um, I think we, we have we have number one, we have the problem of brain drain. Oh I'm okay. very honest. I'm I'm, I'm, very, one, I'm one of them, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I didn't intend I didn't intend on shot. I didn't intend on shooting. No, like see, a, 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 I, I, it's, it's, it's the truth. <laughs> so um because a lot of people are feeling like there's no sources, the country is bad, blah, 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 yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Me, I'm like saying this, I'm very flexible, mm. but if you ask me about coming to the UK, coming to Canada, traveling out to change like for greener pasture, I'll tell you that I'm going out to expand business territories. Yeah, but well, you're coming back. No, when I say I'm going out to expand business territories, you should not be looking at maybe I'm going to maybe like spend one year. I'm going like maybe for a speaking engagement. For an, yeah, and come back. Week, two, and come back to headquarters. Yeah. Base. Mm -hmm. That kind of a thing. That's what is in my mind. Because, I mean, there's no place like home. But to be very honest, I'm thinking that maybe eventually in my, in my later days, I would be maybe not entirely fully relocating, but I'll be having like, to go to a place like, to, to go and settle down in a place like seashells. They have a, a very, very minimal population. And I think I like the, 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 their environment too. That's yeah. just me. But it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful location. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the point is I'm not going because I'm trying to go and be successful there. Yeah. So. I feel like brain drain is the is, is number, number one problem. Because okay. the truth is, when you go to the abroad, the spirit to us that you do not have yet, because when you go to the abroad, you have cut out, it's practically like you have cut out all possibilities of, you know, all the sources you, all the potential you had here. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you are with yourself and with God. Yeah. You just have to do the most to get food on your table first. So like you're in survival, like, you 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 connect your survival mode mm. by going out. Mm. So and that is why maybe that is the major thing I can see you get from going abroad. That you just like start crazy, and that's why some people take up. It's not necessarily odd jobs because me I don't have I don't feel like they are odd jobs, but they take up jobs that on a norm they were not going to do if they were in their community here. Yeah. In the nation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and people say they have better life there, but well, that's the problem. Well, thankfully now the economy is matching up to the same thing there. They are about to sell. They are, they are currently selling. I mean, fuel at almost the same price, almost a dollar. <laughs> so, it makes sense. so we are we are getting cool. We are getting cool. 
So <laughs> the, the economy is getting better to that, the terms of what people face over there. Because yeah. I mean, you go to that country and everything is on the high rise. Electricity bills, you're like paying $200 per month, you know, the yeah. kind of a thing. And here in Nigeria, on the norm, you're paying like 5K, 2K per month. You're even fighting the person that is coming to collect the money. <laughs> but now it is matching up. It is matching up. So it is very, very awesome. Okay. So for me, the number one, the number one challenge people have is that we are trying to always look for another better place. People, and it's not just nine, it's not just about Nigeria now. I think yeah. it's about everybody. They feel no, like it's 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 a it's a human human thing. Migration yeah. has always been what we do as a species. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is because we feel that oh, if we had this kind of life, we would get this kind of result better. But the truth is, and that is why that's one of my one of my core values. Starting where you are, what do I have right here where I am? To get the life that I feel like if I had that other life, I would be living. Mm. And that is one of the key foundations in, 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 in DMC. Like you said, we, we are calling ourselves investors. Instead of waiting to have two million naira to invest in real estate, start with saving the 22,000 naira you can save from your 20,000 naira salary. And save it for investment purposes. You, once you save that money because it's for investment purpose you're an investor thank yeah. you okay so there's no we should we should not we should not necessarily be like i in other life no other life is better wherever you are that is your destination that is your destiny place to succeed but if you move again if you now decide to move wherever you move to is now the new destiny place to succeed okay okay you're right so, yeah, so number one, however, as a country, you have that problem of brain drain because I mean, when all the people that have sense, they feel like they, their sense is not good enough for the country, it's good enough for other countries, you know, they go. And they now, they're also trying to push people that have sense that are not really necessarily interested in going to go. It's not bad, but you have that problem of brain drain. Then the second problem we have is um, um, also feeling that um, government. When I say government, I'm not saying we have a go- um, um, problem of bad government. No, I'm saying that we have a problem of government, of being entitled to government results. Okay. There's something I saw somewhere. The economical policies that are set by a government doesn't necessarily determine your own personal economy. Okay. Mo- most people don't know that. 80% of the determination of your personal economy as an individual, as a family, is on you. Then the 20% is on the policies that are set. Okay. If the policies are not favorable, you have 80% to you to get results. To be creative, we are taught improvisation when we're young. But a lot of us, when we're taught these things, we're just learning for the grade. We're not learning. We're not allowing the learning to pass through us. So that is why we didn't internalize some of these things. Mm. So we also have that problem of being entitled to government results. Yes, the government is faulty and well, congratulations to them. God has blessed them. We keep praying for them. And then, yes, we'll do better next time to vote the right person. If people that feel like they can do better are trying to get in, we'll look into their data, their bio data, and try to vote them in. Also campaign for people that we believe in. Beautiful politics is a, it's a game, it's a business, just like business. You don't have emotions <laughs> in it. Don't stress yourself. Just vote in the person. If it doesn't work out, the next person, you know. But just like in business, just okay, just the way it works in business, a business can be down and then the business be in debt. But me as a person that owns the business, I'm not in debt. Because my personal finance is not determined by my business finance. Quote in quote as an LLC, as a corporation, not as a uh, of know, course, those not, not one uh, man business, not a one man business. So we should not be actually. Um, we have that problem of government entitlement. Then, yeah. then the next problem, um, I feel we have is what um, and what other problem? Okay, so yeah, the third one, which is now like twenty percent of it, is now like bad governance actually. Okay. And like the general governmental policies, you know, that are not favorable. Um, and we do. But the first thing, you see where I started from? It yeah. started from the people before yeah. the government. Yeah. 
See, yeah, I, yeah. And I, I will tell you something. I like that. Okay. Uh, because a lot of people who first point finger at the government. I mean, like you are, you, you, you are saying, you are not saying the government is doing a fantastic, fantastic job. Okay. Yeah. But we as individuals need to take responsibility for what we contribute to our personal situations. I like that. See, you are taking you are taking responsibility. Again, again, I will say this. This is something a young person like you do not normally do. You see, I will tell you, when I was your age, I wasn't thinking as bold as you are thinking. Yeah. You see, I, I wasn't. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell a lie. Okay. Uh, you are thinking far, far beyond your, your age and your, your environment. And that's, that's good. That is fantastic. You know? So, uh, yes, you, you did mention earlier, uh, and I was happy to hear that you read, okay? And like I said, uh, as, a, as a society, we don't read. And uh, I want to encourage people to read. Okay, so I want you to give my audience five books to get into the into the library. Okay, uh, I I hope I hope they will do more than just getting those books that they will read it. Okay, but first, give us those books. Yeah, number one, Ten um, X Row by Grant Cardone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Yes. Ten. Uh, ten X. Number, yeah. The next row. The number yeah. two. This book. The Alchemist. Oh. Okay. My. Uh. I had had a I had a guest some weeks ago that I recommended. Yes. Mm -hmm. Think and Grow Rich. Of course. Of course. Then um, which book? Which book? Okay. Okay. Okay, so this is out of it, right? This is out of it, but I'll also be recommending the book of my spiritual father. Oh, let me, let's see, let's see the, no. Okay, utterance. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the, the doorway to manifest, to manifest, to manifest that uh, divine realities. Okay, okay. Yeah, All right. so that would be like the fourth book. Okay. Uh, then, then which one should I recommend? I have, Okay, because I'm currently reading books on entrepreneurship, um, you know. Yeah, for please give, give us give us one of those books, please. Okay, okay. I think this would be the last one. I, there, there are a lot of I know a lot of people would have recommend because these are like popular titles, but this one is not that popular. The rule of entrepreneurship by Rob mm -hmm. Young. By Bob Young, okay. Rob, okay. Rob Young, Rob Young, Rob, Rob Young, okay. Oh, yes. Rob, Rob Young, okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Y e u n g, yeah, okay. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. The utterance is by Caleb Dada. Caleb Dada. So then, that is five. Okay. The next two, the Alchemist, Think and Grow Rich, utterance, then the rules of entrepreneurship. Good, 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 good. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yeah, now, and then uh, people should also look out to my books very soon. Of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. Good. Now, uh, you're a young man. You're a very young man, uh, but you are doing things beyond your age. Okay. Uh, I, I, and uh, this is something that uh, I really want you to give my audience advice okay people like you okay what is your record your advice to them to help them to be like you to contribute something 
to their society? Well, well, I don't know, but I always have a very, 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 not necessarily like very, very different approach, approach to things. But the truth is, the truth is, if you want to be like me, please don't be like me. <laughs> you can't you can't survive being like me you can't survive the pressure and this is me being that honest you can't survive the pressure especially if you're my age mates are trying to enter my shoes you'll be swallowed the shoe doesn't fit the best shoe that fits you is your shoe and that is why maybe I am living to see that people who have lived in shoes that are similar to your own personal legend are able to leave roof, blueprints that you're able to like, if you're not walking exactly in them, you're walking probably beside them in your own shoes. Okay. So, okay, now back to advice. What do you, what should you do generally? Whatever, wherever you are in life. Number one, it, it doesn't necessarily matter to, to achieving anything. It, it doesn't matter. So wherever you are in life. I don't want to be like cliche and say, have a goal. Forget about goals first. Leave goals to one side. Be... Whatever is in your heart right now, bring it forth. Stop overthinking. Estimate where you are currently about manifesting that thing that is in your head. Then start mapping out a way to do it. They call it planning. Then don't overthink your planning. Get on the road. Start working. Some of these things, you'll be figuring them on the way. But the point is, grab a hold of the success you dream of and start taking it on a journey. And thankfully, AI is here. If you dream to be a doctor, you can have a picture of yourself. And it is very, very realistic in doctor attire, in a mega, let's say, 21-story building hospital. You can hang it on your, on your wall, and you are waking up every day. No, city liar. That is me. And you are walking towards it. You are manifesting dreams into realities that is what and that is what a lot of people are not even seeing about aio manifesting dreams into realities by taking them you grab up hold of that dream and take it on a journey starting where you are starting where you are starting where you are that is it and there are no regrets we do not regret on this journey we don't regret we retrospect we measure and we continue running. When you are running a marathon, if you strike your leg on a stone, you don't start feeling sorry for yourself for striking your leg on, your, on the stone. You have to complete the race. You keep running. The blood may be leaking. One of the things you could do is to just take a quick break, five minute break, tie your leg back, get on the road. You, you must be a a fan of uh, David Gagan, what's his name? He's on my profile, definitely. Okay. He's on my profile, so okay. you uh, should know he's getting, I've, he's I've, getting I've, uh, I've listened, I've listened to, to him maybe uh, 10 hours. And wow. uh, I, 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 I also have his, uh, his book. Can't no, hurt I've, me. I've, yeah? Can't hurt me. Yes. Yes. You know, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So let's let's run this up. Let's start run this up. So take uh, take your environment, take Nigeria, take Africa on a journey. Okay, drop it 
in uh, 2050, what do you see? What do I see? Yes. My environment. Uh, Omo, one of the things I can see is that, that well, jokingly, though, I, I don't know, but I feel like I, I may eventually just pick up one day and contest for presidency. <laughs> I just feel so. But I'm not currently looking into politics, but for 20 years from now, 50 years, okay, 2050. Hmm. Uh, to be very honest, let me not stress it. I've not I've not thought about it. Because one of the things about people who achieve connect results is that they don't get, or we don't get, because I achieved the next results, we don't get, we don't get immersed in in the future so much that we are we are not able to see realistic the current um, the current and take the current, you know. We see the big picture, but we keep the big picture on one side. And we are moving every day into the big picture, and that even big picture, which is sometimes on okay. the norm. So, so, so my, my my question is that: What is your big picture for not you as an individual, but for your environment and for Nigeria and for Africa? Okay, my big picture for all of that, and uh, to be that tied to my companies, right? Um, number one for DMC, it's it, it, I'll, I'll have to speak from my company's point of view because, okay. yeah. For DMC, I'm seeing a situation whereby we have as much people as possible. Oh God, this is bigger than me. As much people as possible that have optimized, like practically people living in optimized financial realities and being easily, being easy, sorry, being easily able to work in personal financial supremacy. That is, people are no longer subjected to the demands of money. They are no longer those to and fro by things that has to do with money. So I'm seeing like a 2050 where, you know, a society where people are not maybe killing themselves because someone is owing them 5,000 euro or something. Because everybody have now seen that money is like actually what it is. A trade by pattern. Yeah. An exchange and it's, for and it's instrument. An instrument. Yeah. And not anything more than that. So people are not having issues with relationship as a result of money. That's supremacy. So I'm seeing something like that. Then for 2020, maybe in terms of advancement, I've not necessarily looked into maybe because I'm not in the leadership sector or in the political sector, but uh, I'm definitely seeing a lot of um, growth. I'm seeing, I'm seeing <laughs> for Goloko Diaries, definitely. What, what, do you, what do you see about, about the Jackpa syndrome? Jackpa syndrome. Uh, well, as a result of people like us that are still in Nigeria, <laughs> by the time you know our companies are established, and then investors from the other part of the world are like reaching out to us to say, um, please, can you bring your or countries are reaching out to us that can you bring your company to our country so that you can have your branch here? I know, you know, our people will come back. They will come back home. Jerusalem will return to Israel. Sorry, Jews will return back to Israel. They can't, they can't keep, you can't stay in, you can't stay in, a, you can't keep staying in a land that is not your father's. We come back home. <laughs> but we are here. We are building the temple. So you come worship at the temple. Okay. So uh, for the Jack Pass syndrome, eventually there will be an economy because there's no how. The economy is definitely going to be more buoyant. Africa, and I think that is the truth. Africa is the future. Okay. Yeah. Africa is the future. And all lies are on Africa. And we people, people like us, we are here building that future. And we know that our brothers and our sisters are going to come back. Some, some will still leave because, you know, maybe there's still like famine in the land, you know, it's not going nice and some cannot sustain the famine. But this land is the future and the world is going to come and worship with us. So I think that's what I see of 2050. Wow. See, with people like you, with people like you, 
I believe it. You know. Definitely. Uh, then I will tell you I'm so so happy to have met you. All right. I'm so so happy. And uh, I will tell you, I want to keep in touch with you because uh, I I can see the future in your in your eyes. Okay. Uh, be focused. Continue running your mar marathon. Okay. And uh, some more people will join you. Yeah. Because you are going somewhere. You are going somewhere. Thank you very much for being a great guest of the Think Big for Africa podcast. I really appreciate the invite, sir. And uh, sorry it came, sorry, sorry we did this like later nah, than we should have done it, but I knew I just had to do this today. Yeah, yeah. Man, I can't tell you how happy I am. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. Yeah. I, I do appreciate the invite. And God has yeah. blessed you, sir. God mm. has blessed you. Very best. Okay. Good, good, good. 